If you've ever been confused about the many ways you can move your player in Unity, or you just wondered about the differences between them, we're gonna clear that up right now. Ready? Let's go. So I've got these four little guys here, and if I move them, they're gonna turn blue when they cross this trigger, so we know that's working, and they'll turn red when they collide at the end here. And some of them behave better than others. But let's jump right into the first one and take a look. Our first method is translating the player's transform, and I don't mean that transform.translate is the only way to do this. You could change the position directly like this. You could also make it equal a vector 3.lerp. You could use a third party tweening library that smoothly moves your transform from A to B. It doesn't matter, under the hood these are all doing the same thing. And that is, we're directly changing the transform.position of the game object. And because that does not require physics calculations, we can do it in update instead of fixed update. And we do need to make sure that we multiply our movement by time.delta time. And if you've ever been confused about why you need to do this, time.delta time is the time since the last frame. The reason we multiply it is to keep our speed the same regardless of the frame rate our game is playing at. If we have movement velocity of one unit on the X and we multiply that by time.delta time times our number of frames per second, we'll get one unit per second of movement. It doesn't matter what our frame rate is. That's why we multiply by time.delta time. Now you can see I do have a collider and a rigid body attached, so collisions are technically working, but our transform changes are conflicting with the physics collisions, and that conflict is causing our player to sometimes jitter when he hits the walls, and sometimes he just goes right through them. So because of that, if we move our player this way, we do not want to rely on physics for collisions. Instead, we'll probably want to write our own collision detection. It could look something like this. Keep in mind this is really rough and it only handles collisions from the right side, so in a top down we would need to do it for the left, up, and bottom as well, but you get the idea. With that in place, after removing our rigid body, you can see he stops really smoothly. It is a lot more work to create your own collision detection up front, but a lot of developers do like moving their character this way because it gives them really precise control over every aspect of movement, including collisions. And it's worth mentioning, if you have a kinematic rigid body attached, you can still detect triggers using on trigger enter 2D, but as you can see, he does not turn red, so on collision enter 2D does not get called. This method is similar to the last one, except we're directly setting the position of the rigid body instead of the transform. Therefore, collisions are automatically going to work so long as you stick this in fixed update, not update. We need to account for different frame rates here as well, so we multiply by time.fixed delta time since we're in fixed update. Although, little tip here, you can still use time.delta time. Unity will just convert it to fixed delta time for you, so you really don't need to worry about using fixed delta time. Now, also, whenever we move using rigid bodies, we need to set this to interpolate, or we're going to have jittery movement. To show you movement without interpolate, here's what it looks like running at 5% speed, so you can get a good look at it. You can really see that he is moving at a fixed rate. And here's with interpolate at 5% speed. Interpolate basically fills in movement where there's a difference between the fixed time step and the amount of frames running. So it's always going to be smooth. Now even though physics collisions automatically work with this, if we try to apply forces to this, they're going to conflict with each other. I have this little script that makes my guy dash if I press space. And you can see it works except it never stops working. I'm moving him around and if I just keep on pressing it, it's just going to keep building up force. And as soon as I stop moving, he's going to go flying and that force will not stop until I hit a wall. So overall, this is actually a great way to move your character. You get all the precision from the last method with the bonus of getting collisions working right out of the gate, but you're gonna wanna stay away from applying forces to the rigid body because this movement does conflict with that. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, I just wanna say thank you if you drop a like or a comment down below. Now with this one, we're adding a force to our game object. We've got two modes we can choose from, force or impulse. Force you can think of like a car with a buildup of speed, whereas impulse is like a bullet, it's just instant speed. But with this method, multiplying our move speed by our movement isn't technically a speed, this is going to act as an acceleration instead. You'll notice with this method again you have to do it inside of fixed update, but since it's a force, you do not need to multiply it by time.delta time. You'll notice that, again, we need interpolate, and yes, collisions do work right out of the gate, but there are several problems with this. Our movement, for a player, is horrible. 
it's really slow to speed up. And if I move in the opposite direction, then he has this long deceleration time before he goes in that direction. And also, unless I add drag to this rigid body, once he's moving in a certain direction, he will never stop until he hits something. Also, he can speed up infinitely to the point where he's going so fast, he'll clip right through this collider because he's moving further than that amount of distance each fixed update. Though I will say that was with discrete collision detection instead of continuous. Continuous handles high speed collisions a lot better. But we could fix that with a little bit of extra code. We could add a max speed. And maybe only apply forces if we're moving in a certain direction. And if we're not moving, maybe we apply a force in the opposite direction. And all of a sudden, with the right combination of values, we have a really nice feeling move with some built-in tweakable acceleration and deceleration. And bonus, we can use forces with this as well. So we can be walking and use add force as well, which is great for knockback and dashes and things like that. There's a lot of built-in perks with this method, but it is more work up front, and not everyone likes working with the built-in physics for movement, so it really depends on what you're going for and how much precision you need. This is one of the simplest to get going right out of the gate. There's like barely any code here. Now you'll notice even though we're setting the velocity on the rigid body, we're doing it in update, not fixed update. That's because we're applying a speed directly. The speed will be the same no matter how often it's applied, which is why we also aren't multiplying by time dot delta time. We don't need to here. And since it's the speed of a rigid body, we get the benefit of collisions working from the get go. And just like with all rigid body movement, we need interpolate set on. But just like with rb.move position, we don't want to try applying force here. Nothing really goes wrong, it's just not gonna work because we're setting the velocity directly. That is going to completely overwrite the force that we're trying to apply. So this method, you're probably gonna find it's the hardest to debug problems with because it's really easy to just overwrite other forces and not realize why your code isn't doing what you want it to do but it's very commonly used because of how easy it is to set up and get your collisions working right off the bat. I use this method the most, not for any particular reason, except I've just gotten really accustomed to working with it. And yes, there are other ways to move the player. There's the built-in character controller, but I'm not gonna go through that because it doesn't even work with 2D colliders. And the nav mesh feels more like pathfinding than actual movement, even though there is movement built in, you could still use the pathfinding to determine your destination, but still move your player using any of the methods that we mentioned here. So I hope this cleared things up for you. I will post a little cheat sheet for you in the description to give you the overall pros and cons and some notes on each of these methods. You can make an excellent player controller using any of these methods. They just each require their own nuances to get working nicely. Thanks so much for watching.